A very warm welcome to Merton College Chapel and to the service of Coral Evensong celebrating the 10th anniversary of the installation of the Dobson organ. We sit for the psalmody, Psalms 23 and 27.
The first lesson is written in the second book of the Chronicles, chapter 5. Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished. Solomon brought in the things that his father David had dedicated and stored the silver, the gold, and all the vessels in the treasuries of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the people of Israel in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the Israelites assembled before the king at the festival that is in the seventh month, and all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites carried the ark. So they brought up the ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be numbered or counted. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place, in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the Ark and its poles. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel after they came out of Egypt. Now when the priests came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without regard to their divisions, all the Levitical singers Asaph, Heman, and Jejuthun, their sons and kindred, arrayed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood east of the altar with 120 priests who were trumpeters. It was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the letter of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the second lesson.
that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, This evening's anthem is a world premiere performance of a setting of words translated by Tristan Franklinos of a hymn by Peter Abelard for the first nocturne at Matins on Easter Day. Christiani Plaudite, music by Matthew Martin.
Let us pray. It was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised, the house was filled with a cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Let us give thanks for this house of prayer and for all who in this place make music to the glory of God. On this 10th anniversary of the dedication of the Dobson organ, let us praise God for the skill and craftsmanship of those who designed and built it, for the generosity of those who enabled its installation here and for all who continue to support music making in this chapel and college. O God, Father most holy, whom saints and angels delight to worship in the beauty of heaven, we give thanks for the many ways in which this organ and those who play it enrich the praise offered in this house of prayer. Grant that all who worship here may continue to serve you with gladness and show forth your praise in triumphant song. Let your glory fill this place and your spirit so dwell in the hearts of your people that they may ever be led to sing to you with love and thanksgiving. Grant that all who here find joy in worshipping you may be numbered at last with those who shall sing the new song before your heavenly throne. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. St. Paul says, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. As we continue our celebration of Easter, let us pray that the peace of the risen Christ may bless us and those places in the world experiencing violence, turmoil and unrest at this time. We pray particularly for the situation in the Middle East, for the peoples of Gaza, Israel and Iran for those still held hostage and for their captors and for all who bear the scars of that conflict. God our Father, your risen Son said to his disciples, peace be with you. Teach the leaders of the nations to pursue peace with one another. Reconcile those who are divided, heal the wounded, and prosper the work of all peacemakers, that your kingdom of justice and truth may be revealed in our midst. We ask this through him who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now in the peace of this place, let us offer to God our own prayers. We join our prayers together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Before the final hymn, a reminder that our anniversary celebrations continue with a recital by Olivier Latry here at half past seven. If you're joining us for the recital, we'd be grateful if you could leave the chapel after this service, enjoy some time in the gardens, and then the doors will open at 10 past seven. If you don't have a ticket but would like to join us, tickets will be available on the door. We stand now to sing, Thine Be the Glory.
God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always.